It's definitely not your traditional Malagos Druid. From the Fino's, Oaken Summons package. Yeah, it's got a weird Oaken Summons package inside of it. And then from Fino's side, we've got the Cloning Gallery Priest, Death Fighter Hunter, Odd Paladin, and Malagos Druid as well. Malagos Druid, you're going to be seeing a lot of. Yeah, Odd Paladin banned away from Fino and Odd Rogue banned away from Gallon. Get a look at Gallon on your screen right now. Just saw Fino. That's up there. Fino coming off the, t uh, the win at the tour stop in Orange County where he had to beat Casey in the finals of that one. That was such a stacked tour stop that took place at that event. You know, with BlizzCon, with BlizzCon alongside it, it drew a lot of attention, people coming to BlizzCon as well. But then also... Out of the uh, Malagos Druid whatsoever. See here, Gallon's gonna lead with that Odd Paladin. Fina's gonna be on that Death Rattle Hunter. Notoriously, this is a pretty good matchup for the Odd Paladin. Yeah, I'd a lot say it's pretty times. good. It's, it's close, you know, as surprisingly as it sounds, but... It's like, I'd say 60-40 for the Odd Paladin. So that doesn't sound very close to me. You don't think that sounds that close? No, I'd say like 52-48 sounds close. 55-45 sounds bad. And 60-40 sounds pretty miserable. All right, maybe I'd go with a 55-45 then. I don't think it's pretty miserable. Okay, well, well try, try to sell me on this then because I, right, I don't believe right, you. Right. I don't believe you. Well, listen. I'm thinking. You're right. <laughs> Pretty miserable. <laughs> it's here. You don't have to agree with me. You're fine to disagree. In fact, I encourage you to disagree. You sold me. <laughs> All you right. Me. Are you interested in a bridge? Oh, Avril, no. you know me and my bridge. There's one that I own in Brooklyn in particular that I think you might be very interested in. <laughs> I'm very interested right now. Pina's going to lead off with a tracking here and, you know, Outright already up to a pretty tough decision. You know, I've been playing a lot of Death Rattle Hunter recently because it's, I think it's one of the decks that I probably most misunderstood. It looks like. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the. Uh, you know, they're kind of clearly the wanting for an admin. Maybe they can hear us? Is that a thumbs up? Something's going on. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what it is. He's saying. Uh, uh, stop let, the sound. Uh, stop the sound. Is that stop? If you can hear me. Blink twice. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. But can Gallon hear you? <laughs> yes. So let's not talk about the cards in their hand right now. There's a Powden on one side and there's a Hunter on the other. We apologize for this. You know, bear with us on technical stuff. You know, technology is the vehicle of, of the esports that we watch. And sometimes that vehicle stalls. You just got to work on it a little bit and get going again. Yeah, but they're in the middle of the game. An entire cast, not mentioning a single card. Well, I can talk can about. Can it be done? I can talk about cards on board. I'm great at that. There is a Glowtron on board, and Glowtron stat is that line. Is the name of that card? Yes. Glowtron stat line is one attack, three health. The Hunter Hero power <laughs> deals two damage. Bino didn't have Kaliseth. <laughs> <laughs> because it would have been played. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so I, I want to go back to the matchup. What sold you so quickly on, on the matchup then? Um, Just thinking about it. In, in the past, I think that Hunter has a lot of game and uh, has a lot of tools to deal with Odd Paladin's board. Uh, more so than you would think. But I definitely think a lot of times Odd Paladin can go wide enough on the board. And if they don't have those tools, you just automatically win. That's the way I felt. So, uh, my concept of numbers is probably much different than yours. When I hear 60-40, I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. Well, let, let me let me ask you a question here. What, what was the last, like, let's talk about a prior meta, okay. since the players can hear us. What was the last Hunter versus Paladin meta you remember? Oh, gosh, that's a very specific question, Admiral. You're putting me on the spot here. I'm going to go with... Evolve Shaman versus Pirate Warrior. That's Hunter versus Paladin? Sure. Okay. It was the first two decks that came to my head. Sell me on that one, because I don't believe you. <laughs> I think, I thought in the past, the Shaman was favored, but I thought the Pirate Warrior had more heat. Okay. If you're wondering why we're talking about nonsense right now, it's because we have a... Uh, an issue with the players in here at the moment. They are, they can't hear us. We are live on site. Uh, we've gotten word that the players can hear us, so we are not at liberty to talk about the game as we normally would. Uh, 
it would be giving information away to the players. That takes away from the game. You're not wrong. Doesn't really add to it. It's great to watch when I can see. When I can't see the hands that I'm watching, I get very nervous. I'm like, ooh, I don't know what they're going to do. You never feel. know what's hiding around that corner. And I feel like it's going to be bad. I can never remember if they had the coin or not either. Should I? Hmm. It's very hard to talk about Hearthstone without talking about the hands. It's, it's much more difficult. All right, so we've gotten word that we can't speak again as normal. So if you can hear me, blink twice. He didn't blink twice. I, I, I didn't see him blink twice unless he blinked so Options. fast. Yeah. Options. Maybe I blinked twice in the time he blinked twice. So if issue has been fixed, players can no longer hear us. So now we get kind of back to it. But you know, I feel like we're, we are past one of those early points where Fino is in quite a heap of trouble. I'd say oftentimes that the way this matchup can be tamed again is by sticking a uh, Witchwood Grizzly to the board. If that happens, he gets an opportunity to keep and play that. Gallon's got a lot of stuff on board going on. And there is a, there's a very powerful card creeping around the corner. And I'm not talking about quarter creeping. You're talking about level up. I'm talking about level up. That card hitting, you know, even that card hitting like three minions is just great. I mean, you kind of think five of it, mana six six is good. Yeah. Whoa. What about five <laughs> mana ten ten? Ooh, now we're thinking. I like it bigger. Go big or go home. Is it's pretty thinking. hard to get bigger than ten ten. I'm purposefully popping those P's and those T's. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know how Fino gets back into this one without just a, the most incredible string of of draws. I, I'm trying to even think of draws that get there, and I can't. This is like, it's going to go for Desperation Cube, just trying to fend off position. I mean, it's actually, you know, does set up pretty oh, strong in a level up. Ziliax. So he can play dead the cube next turn to create the spider bombs, and then magnetic Ziliax to a spider bomb to steal back a bunch of life in this spot. This is really smart. That is that's, exact, that's exactly how Fino gets back into it. I think that it. is as well. There's also the potential where if he doesn't want to go for that play, he could also play dead the cube and then play out the Houndmaster Shaw and try and kill it's multiple one. minions yeah. with, the, with the spiders play dead. Wow, that's crazy. It's very unique lines of play like this that kind of separate the best death about 100 players from so I, I look at that last turn. I wonder if Gallon maybe should have taken out that spider bomb. You're playing around a pretty uh, playing around like a three card hand at that point. The question is, does Gallon find that worth it? What did it really cost him? A cube has to be in the hand. Even if there's cube, you'd have to cube it, and you would lose one of the three threes that could have pushed it a little bit more damage. And then on top of that, your opponent also has to have play dead plus either Ziliax or Houndmaster Shaw, which we can see are both of them. So the odds of having that combination of cards is very, very slim. What about when your opponent does nothing for the first few turns, though? You know, what cards do you think? I'm thinking about Rexar, of course. So, you know, I'm thinking about Witchwood Grizzly. Katharina. I always forget about Ziliax, so... Yeah, Ziliax is one of the sleeper cards you kind of forget about. Just, he's kind of innocuous. And then you see him and you go, yeah. oh, that's oh. right. I forgot how insanely powerful that one was. Those meddling Ziliax. But it's not like insane game-ending powerful. It's just like a, it's just a good card. He's playing a lot of decks, and he's going to go for the line of play I was mentioning earlier. So is this a candle shot attack first ever? Doesn't look like it to me. Definitely think that should have been a I would have liked the candle shot attack, attack first. first, I think. I'm trying to think of the merit for not doing the candle shot attack first. I guess if it doesn't kill the 3-1, you can then just it doesn't kill three one. You're quite happy. The candle shot save here, of course, preserves his ability to, you know, get through the divine shield and potentially more minions next turn. There are merits to, to saving it, you know, and only the only difference is that sometimes you run into a bad spot when the spider bomb death rattle hits the minion you attacked. So I don't mind it. And the fungal mancer is great here for pushing damage. But the issue is, as soon as Aziliax comes down next turn, that's the thing. Is, Vine Cleaver is, has to get through it. Gallon has lost the board now. 
he's got a lot of damage here, but you know, you look at Fino's hand, Witchwood Grizzly mm -hmm. and Zilliax both there, plus there's still the cube, plus there's still a Shaw there. Maybe this all could have been avoided by trading into that spider bomb earlier. Ah, I know. It's definitely that, a really tough call because if you trade, you lose like two extra recruits. Oh, it's it's a super hard spot to look at and decide that you're going to trade in that situation mm. because, like, looking that far down the line and putting Fino in a, on, a, on a cube into Shaw play dead play or a cube into Zilliax play dead play, that's very far down the road, and there are so many other iterations that can take place as well. You, know, you, you want to maximize your cards if you go for another line of play where you just you know, trade into it. Yeah, like your goal is to maximize your percent versus the cards that are quite obvious. It's to maximize it versus the Rexar. It's to maximize it versus a Witchwood Grizzly. It's to maximize it versus just a Zilliax. Yeah, when you play around too many things, your plays become disjointed. This play right here is absolutely yeah. insane. Precision. This is gas. This is the definition of a Hearthstone play. You could even technically just take a value trade, unless you're that scared of the other 1-1. One, one. Fino's getting to the do-whatever-he-wants point. You're not wrong. The Vine Cleaver has to go into the Spider Bomb. And heals him for five again. This isn't looking good for Gallon. Could this have been avoided? Yes. Could it have realistically be, been avoided? I don't think so. I, to be honest, I, I kind really of think don't. Gallon went with the right play by going. I, I, I agree with that. That's the thing is you're looking at a situation where Gallon got immensely punished with the line that was taken. But again, if you play around too many things. Gallon could have given you 50 other scenarios where it would have turned out worse. Where it would have turned out worse. You know, he could have given you other scenarios where, uh, you know, the play pans out uh, better in, in his instance as well. Like, there's so many different things going on. It's just the one that he fell into was play dead the cube that had eaten a spider bomb. That was a great spot from Fino to go for that, that was, play. Honest, I am very impressed with Fino in this one because I thought he was pretty much out of this. And instead, it looks like he he might be in full control. For now there is still a Vine Cleaver. But Fino eventually just, you know, he needs to start pushing some damage face and end the game. Oh, oh, there's no longer a Vine Cleaver. There's not a Vine Cleaver anymore. I don't see a Vine Cleaver on the board. Vine, where'd that Vine Cleaver go? It vanished. Where'd the armor come from? That's not supposed to happen like that, unless you're Fino. If you're Gallon, that's not how it's supposed to work. Okay, well, that's something. Wow, what the <laughs> job? That's not supposed to happen either! None of this is supposed to happen. <laughs> None of this. But it ha it's happening. Gallon just doesn't have any damage left. So level up is the draw? Without level up, can he win? Because this is a kid crush! And crush is what it's going to do. It's about to deal eight damage! Whew. They don't call him King Crush for nothing. I think it's so cool that King Crush was like thought of to be one of the worst legendaries that was out there. And then as soon as Cube and Katharina enter the fray, they're like, oh, King Crush is... A it's insane. Yeah. That card's nuts. Have you ever cubed and then played at it and Terra scaled a King Crush? Yeah. It's one of the greatest feelings in Hearthstone That's right like now. the only thing I try to do right now. I love this card. It's I got can see you prolonging the game just to do that. The entrance of King Crush is one of the most fantastic ones in the game. You know, you rarely see it because Katharina is usually how this card gets into play lately. But when it gets slammed and it's just... You're like, dinosaurs! It makes the big noise. Yeah. Just like Mountain Giant. When Mountain Giant hits face, it makes the big noise. Gallon did not draw the card that lets him handle this. 1-0 for Fino. And Gallon losing a favorable as well. You hate to see that. That is definitely. Unless you're Fino. <laughs> yeah, if you're Fino, you're like, thank you, Cube. I'll tell you what, thank though. You, Spider Bomb. An impressive line of play yes, very is what Fino, got Fino to that spot. That was three turn setup. That's very hard. That's just tough to do in general. Like, you just don't really get that opportunity that often. I think with Death Rattle Hunter, in order to be proficient with the deck, you have to be looking at those three turn setups. 
Because a lot of times you're going to have very awkward cards to play. Like, for instance, Hunter's Mark. Like, Hunter's Marking your own minion or Hunter's Marking something else in, in the event that you either draw a card or you already have something in your hand. That's, you know, what makes great Hunter players good. That's what makes the deck so prominent. Yeah. Is when you can think three to two turns ahead, as well as Fino did that game, there's nothing you can't beat. It's a good deck. You got good plays. But if you make gooder plays, it's a gooder deck. And there's a lot of permutations of that. Again, I keep, feel like I keep using the word permutations and iterations and stuff. But that's a lot of what Death Rattle Hunter is. It's just a lot of small, unique interactions that require you to pay very particular attention to how the momentum is shifting. At what point do you turn the corner and fully take control? It's a lot of setup. Setting up the plays to win you the game. We see there. See Fino yeah, like hang on to a cube in this spot. I like it. I you think know, cube's very important. Th there, there is something I want to talk about here. Uh, at this dream hack. This is a last year of standing dream hack, so the, the player that wins gets to keep their deck. If you lose the deck, it's gone. Uh, when you're playing on ladder and you queue into a hunter and you don't necessarily know what it is, Thanks. I don't think that uh, Fino's keep is standard. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's wrong, but I don't think it's standard. There are a lot of secret hunters that I queue into on ladder, and so many games like I throw away a candle shot. And, you know, I, I bowl again, I try to get eggs, and I keep cubes sometimes, and then my opponent plays a dire mole on turn one, or a secret keeper on turn one, and I go, I forgot about that one. And it's because I'm staring at myself playing Death Rattle Hunter. It's a very different beast in an open deckless format where you know that you're in a Death Rattle Hunter mirror. It's one of the reasons that you see Gallon hang on to the Katharina. Oh yeah, Katharina is very important to the mirror. It just allows you to put two immense bodies onto the board as quickly as possible. And that's what you're looking to do in this matchup, especially that's why we saw Fino keep the cube. It is just, you know, the hundred decks have no way of answering when you cube a minion. Fino gonna go ahead and coin out the Devil Sore Egg there. Doesn't have follow up to it necessarily. We'll be able to get down that spider bomb. But getting that Devil Sore Egg down just in case something like a Terra Scale comes off the top. Pretty dead turn here for Gallon, I'd say. Debating the the uh, maybe he's pretending he's debating the attack here as well. You know, Gallon is yeah. It's a pretty straightforward turn. You, you pretty much just hear a power here. Your power um, the base. Yeah, I agree. But if Gallon makes this play really quick, he tells Fino right away what his hand is. If Gallon instead kind of looks at Fino and he smiles a little bit, and he's thinking about the attack. You know, maybe Fino's thinking, is he holding a, a candle shot with like a hunter's mark in his hand, for instance? Is he? Uh, is he ever hanging on to, you know, a hunter's mark and, you know, not killing this and then hunter's marking the devil sore afterwards? Little tiny things to try to not give away information about his hand. The psychology side of Hearthstone, you know, doesn't get talked about much. The psychological factors where you kind of make your opponent think one way or you want them to think one way. You've played a lot of tournaments. How often, how often does that come up for you when you're on the big stage? I would say for me, very rarely. Um, I never really focused on the psychological aspect. I, I would try to sometimes. For instance, I would like one of the biggest things I would do is just stare down the opponents. I was known for that. I think they did a little funny segment on that about how I just <laughs> kept looking into my opponent's eyes. I, I don't know. I try to get reads through that, but I think a lot of times it just comes down to you know more so. So you two are a victim of exactly what you just described: the lack of psychological aspect yes. that players count for trying to focus on like a lot of other stuff that's going on so I neglect in that field but definitely you know can play a big factor in a lot of games one of these shots is not going to live <laughs> no. <laughs> and one of them is going to stick <laughs> and there's going to be a cube to follow I do think Fino has a number of interesting plays here though you know, one, one of the plays I've become a big fan of is flanking strike my own egg. Just to put the pressure on? Oh, it gets a lot of pressure going. So if Fino chooses to develop Houndmaster Shaw, Jory gets an opportunity to, you know, rush the minions in there. However, maybe he just deals eight less damage. <laughs> You're not wrong. The Shaw is less pressure by just the 5-5 five, five body. I think that's what Fino's thinking about. I, yeah, I tend to play the Shaw here. Your opponent looks like in a, they're in a very bad spot. Uh, and with that draw, Gallon, you know, maybe has some some breathing room, but he, it looks like he's in a pretty darn bad spot here. Gallon just has to hope to get to that Katharina, but I, I really like the Shaw here because Cube can come down next turn, 
hitting the egg, and then you'll have rush on both the cube and the devil sore, and you still push the shaw face even through something mm -hmm. like a grizzly. And then the following turns, if you really want to, you trade the cube off, and then you can flanking strike yeah. one of your eggs later on. But there's also there's also the merit to uh, using cube on your own shaw. You know, a lot of times the shaw starts to snowball in pressure, and if Fino's able to pick up a death rattle activator. Cube in the Shaw means that there's going to be four more Shaws that Gally needs to handle. So even with, you know, big turns, you know, huge defense with uh, with Witchwood Grizzlies, big swings with Katharina in those spots, you're not always getting out of it quite that easily because your opponent has the liberty to rush their minions and just pick apart your board. So Fino really investing into position with the Shaw rather than just, you know, saying, I, I think I'm in a good enough spot, I guess I'll start attacking. Your opponent makes a 5-5, five five, though. It's usually a sign that you want a cube and start taking care of the board. You can even take the value trade into the Devil Soar and use the last shot of the Eagle Horn Bow. Or Eagle Horn Bow. I wish that was an Eagle Horn Bow. <laughs> I don't. The Candle Shot. Candle Shot's way better. I guess in this situation, yeah. But <laughs> that, Eagle Horn, Eagle Horn Bow didn't even play. Eagle Horn Bow deals three damage face, Admirable. May I remind you? That also costs three mana. Eagle Horn Bow sucks. <laughs> Fresh meat. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Betraying the face hunters. That's right. Around the world. I see. I see, Admirable. It's not that bad a card. <laughs> just, just everything. <laughs> not is, this deck, though. Everything has got three health right now. Either killed something when it came into play, it took one of your minions, or it makes a, an egg dinosaur when you kill it. I just. An egg dinosaur hybrid. Yeah. Dallin's going to say, no more Shaw. Tired of this. Ooh, and the, the Witchwood Grizzly just gets cleaned up easily on board. Fino can even trade in, flanking strike one of his own eggs, and then play dead the other one. Can even yeah. fit in a tracking just to, you know, kind of see what goes on first. Katharina. That's a big yikes. Me, that's a big yikes tracking, though. These are all cards that you do not mind having left in your deck after this turn. I think the Zilliax is fine to get rid of. But the high main and the Katharina. Dare you talk about Celiax that way? Celiax is a good card, don't get me wrong, but in this matchup, nah, you can go. <laughs> high main, though, high main was the king at one point. There used to be a time where you played a high main on six and you felt good about it. Are, are you a fourth beast high main kind of player? I'm definitely not a fourth beast Mukla kind of gamer. <laughs> oh, that's a, yeah, gallon has got a Mukla as one of the beasts in the deck, by the way. Not, um, not for the hunter. Oh, he doesn't he have it in hunter, that's right. Main. Hunter's it's, got it's, high main. It's purple that has the Mukla in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gallon's got Mukla in the other decks. Yes, all three of the other ones. Yeah, which was, which was Malagos Drew with Oak and Summon pat, Package, Odd Paladin, and Odd Rogue. Odd Rogue being away in this set. Looks like he's going to go for it. Oh, no, it looks like he's going to flank strike that one. I, I'm a little curious as to this. Maybe uh, Fino feels as if the only way he can... He has Mossy Horror in the deck, right? I think he's really hoping to get that. I, I believe okay. so. I, I, I think what it was is that Fino saw that the egg would get a free trade onto the five one. So if he flanking strikes the one one, his five one would then up trade mm -hmm. into the egg. Then you get a five one. Well, he would lose the five one to the one one egg. Then you have a five five and a three three. Then you have to trade your 5-5 five five into their 5-5. Five five. The thing I'm looking at, too, is Fino's hand. It's quite poor right now. You're not wrong. I can that's see what I'm a little worried I mean, about. this looks to me like he's going for tracking Mossy Harbor next turn. Like, <laughs> so as well. That, that's going to, you know, do some game ending, if that's the case. All right. As a backup plan, in case that doesn't work, the beasts are starting to dwindle away, though. Those are not mossy hard. Deathstalker Rexar will allow him to clean up the Witchwood Grizzly. But Gallant is going to have the first Katharina. That's a big deal. And honestly, like Vino's, he's kind of just running out of stuff at this point. You know, we saw Savannah Highman kick the dust. We've seen a Grizzly in hand. King Crush is still there. But the Grizzly is getting from Katharina. I don't think point. he played a Grizzly earlier on, so yeah, but it will just be the Grizzly. And what comes out, I'm pretty sure it'll be a High Man. I guess it. I don't believe it could have been a Grizzly. Both Grizzlies were played from Gallon's side, if I remember correctly. There could have been one left. Where? Yeah, I don't know about that flanking strike earlier on on that 1-1. One, one. 
I think he needed to fight a little bit more. I don't know if he had that liberty, though. You know, if you look, if you look at the way that Fino set this up, he did take a risk with a turn, but if he drew Mossy Harbor, I, you know, he probably wins the game. Would oh, have, yeah. Would have Four, five, five 20, 20 board, into play. Insane. Yeah. So with the way that Fino's hand was built, I don't mind how he went about this. It's just, you know, he got in a bad spot, decided to take a risk. Risk didn't pay off, and then, you know, this is the nature of risks when they don't pay off. They, they tend to look a little bit worse than they actually are. Your gallon here, it has to be the King Crush. And I think this is a... Uh... Oh, it, it, it's an Okelaseth buff, by the way. So yes. it doesn't have to be the King Crush. But it probably it probably is. I don't know. I've got nine mana. I've got a nine mana card in my hand. I like playing the nine mana card. Gallon's appearing to have some tech issues if you take a look at his face and the way that that hand animated. And he does not look happy about it. Not at all. Maybe it just wouldn't let him play the King Crush. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, just look at his face. He clearly is, you know, quite upset. So. I don't blame him. It was looking a little kind of weird. That's a direwolf alpha. And there's a bunch of eggs on the board. Unfortunately, you know, the placement. Well, I don't. If you get to turn two of them into five fives, that's pretty good. But you're staring down a whole lot more, Admiral. And I don't think there's any beasts left in the deck for that, Katharina. I think all of them are gone. I think you're right. The high main got burned. King Crush is in the hand. You can see the other Grizzlies in the hand. The other Grizzly got taken. So this Direwolf Alpha is going to need to uh, put in some overtime. Yeah. Also, just a lot of stuff to think about here. And I like, I like that Fino is, you know, looking at an attack first and foremost. Got to hurry up. So that lets you know where to go with the Direwolf Alpha afterwards because the egg gets popped. If you put the Direwolf Alpha down first, then the eggs get popped. I don't think everything got in in time. I don't even think that he would have lived. So. All right, well, that's a headset off. That's it. This is. I don't know what's going on. Uncharted territory, admirable. I don't know what's going on. Uncharted. We'll get a word of what's going on here in a second, but they're clearly having some issues uh, te technically. So we're going to come back to us for a second and get the situation figured out again. We apologize for the tech issues that we've been experiencing here. We are at the mercy of technology to some degree. It doesn't always work how you expect it to. Uh, hashtag, I'm an old person. Please help me install Windows. Uh, they got the little paperclip guy for a <laughs> he can He can help you out. I, I see you're trying to play King Crush. <laughs> against that. However, this priest deck, I actually think this priest deck is pretty good against a Death Rattle Hunter. Yeah, it's pretty much the opposite of Druid against Death Rattle Hunter. I, I, I think I have about a 0% win rate against Cloning Gallery Priest uh, with Death Rattle Hunter. I feel like I lose just pretty much every time. Yeah, I can agree with that, Admiral. I've seen you lose to it every time. Yeah, I, I, I've also <laughs> seen me lose to it pretty much every single time. One, one of the big issues I, I run into is that, you know, with Fino's cloning gallery uh, priest deck, the way that deck operates is it, it just kind of does nothing for a very long time. It just, you know, kills a minion, kills a minion, kills And then suddenly it plays Zarek's Cloning Gallery, puts a bunch of minions from their deck into play as 1-1s, one and then they kill me instantaneously. The other side of it is they make a big thing, and then I kill it, and then they resurrect it a bunch. Uh, both of those situations tend to be pretty bad. Uh, you know, I have tried my best to get as outright as aggressive as possible, and I have just never seemed to find an iteration where that really works. It's very difficult to have that aggressive opening hand. You would need something like the Prince Kelseth into an egg, into egg activators. I mean, you Gosh, definitely can oh. get it done with some uh, really aggressive start with the Devil Soar egg. However, those hands just aren't that common. You don't typically get that opening hand every time. You're not always going to have Devil Soar on the coin or play it out on turn three. Yeah, you, sometimes you got to fight fair. You got to tracking. Exactly. Uh, you're hoping your opponent plays a minion. You can flanking strike sometimes. Sometimes you have to just play a 3-3. Three, three. In this matchup, it's basically whatever puts the most stats on board for Gallon. 
uh, a lot of times is the direction he'll end up going. But so many of his cards just don't work against Fino that much. You know, look at Candle Shot, for instance. Doesn't really do much. Spider Bomb, doesn't really do much. Ben of Argus, not really doing much. Witchwood Grizzly, not really doing much. You know, I feel like it's just every card in the deck that is not a combo of Egg and Play Dead or Egg and Terror Scale Stalker isn't really doing much. And a lot of times, even when you get that board state that you, you're comfortable with of like two to three mid-range minions, you've been trying to finally stick something to push damage, what'll happen is they just Psychic Scream it back into your deck. Yeah, or they just don't care because it's six damage and they have plenty of life. They have so many ways to counteract what you're doing and then get very murdery very quick when they get to the Xerix Cloning Gallery uh, position. Uh, if you let them play Xerix Cloning Gallery, it's basically checkmate at that point. Yeah. There is very little you can do against that. I mean, you can have the Rexar to kind of combat it, or maybe a Mossy Har, but then they just start rezzing stuff. Yeah, like the, the big one to me is if Fino draws uh, the big hitters, if he draws Malagos, and he draws Prophet Velen, and it takes him a lot of time to actually get those cards into play and into a death rattle pool, um, or if he just doesn't find them in general. But, you know, it's it's kind of like the inverse property that Fina's working against, where if he tends to just draw all of his big minions, that's when he can get trouble. Uh, you know, if, if that's the case, Galen, you know, looking at the Deathstalker Rexar in hand, you use that to fight against the cloning gallery turn, and then you hope to fend off the rest of what's going on. You know, when you don't have that outright aggression, what what do you do at that point? It's really hard to fight off uh, the large minions, especially when they get red so often with all those cards. The Gilded Gargoyle, very strong pickup for Fino here is going to give him that coin, get him one turn closer to that cloning gallery. Yeah, I, I'm always quite surprised at how important the coin seems uh, to this deck. Like the Gilded Gargoyles, when I first saw in here, I was like, what the heck is that card doing in there? And then it started getting played against me, and I was like, oh, that's exactly what it's doing in there. Uh, it's enabling turns faster than they normally have them. And it also gives you on the, uh, the Diamond Spellstone turn the ability to coin and play two Mind Blasts afterwards. It's very versatile as well, not only just letting you escalate the plays you typically shouldn't be allowed to do, but also, you know, it gives you gas with a card like Lyra. When yeah, you that's have right. Lyra's on the board and you're just playing coin after coin, trying to get there in the end, those coins could mean the difference of you finding that silence for that uh, minion you need it for or finding the extra Mind Blast. I mean, it's Gilded Gargoyle isn't the most impressive card, but it does its job very well in this deck. Well, I'm also looking at two Spellstones in uh, Fino's hand early on. And something I'm looking at is if he just resurrects two minions, does that accomplish anything? Like, Because he could snag a coin here, smite this guy off, or not smite it off, and then next turn just just play one of the, uh, the Spellstones. I don't think he's going to do that, but that would give him another Gilded Gargoyle, which perhaps gives him another coin, so he can clone a gallery again. You know, there's a there's a lot of little things uh, that I don't have experience with, with cloning gallery because you know I, I am a notorious priest hater. Oh, I love priests. What I'm gonna like from this is I actually think there's a lot of merit for coining it out, and the reason I say that is let's say Gallon has a very weak turn. You coin it out. You then get the radiant elemental and the gilded gargoyle. Let's say then Gallon plays a minion into that. You then trade the gilded gargoyle in. You then have the radiant elemental. Zarek's cloning gallery costs eight. You then go coin Zarek's cloning gallery on the following turn. Yeah, that's that's you know kind of where my head was was going with this too. The only issue is you know right yeah, now Shadow the Vision with Grizzly. Yeah, Shadow Visions tends to change your mind yes. a little bit too. You know, Psychic Scream is a tool you you want to have multiple of in the matchup, and you're not looking for you know Mind Blast. You're not looking for Smites. You're looking to upgrade your spell stones. <laughs> and then, He's and then Fino Fino over yeah, yeah. Fino, Fino, Fino tossing out a little uh, friendly BM here. It, it's really a testament to how bad a shape Gallon is truly in at the moment. Not it's wrong. it's really bad. And getting Shadow Visions into Shadow Visions into Scream is so much better because you have the spell stones in your hand. Yeah, it, it's honestly like it's just truly a benefit in this particular situation because Fino's got nothing else to do. This is looking really good for Fino right now. Thirty life. Scream to get rid of any pressure. I want you to pick what order of cards Gallon draws to win the game from here. All right, next turn there's going to need to be Lotheb, a cube. <laughs> Lotheb. Then he needs a Shadow Step. All right, we're going to need a Lotheb, and then we're going to need an Emperor Tharzan. Then we're going to need a couple Frost Six Ice, ice lances. lances. Maybe a Reno Jackson. That doesn't help. You got to stop the spells. <laughs> Or 
as Alina Sullivan. <laughs> With a tog waggle. <laughs> you take their cloning gallery, you take their deck, and then you do it right back to them. Oh, Gallon, I wish you luck, but I think you'll need more than that in this game. And you know the funniest part about this to me is I was casting WSG where Gallon was competing. Oh, that is one of the big minions you were talking about drawing. Yeah, I was but... casting WSG with Gallon, and he played just saying, was playing this exact priest deck. And he lost three games in a row with it. And now there's a potential for Fino just to start sweeping with his own his own baby. Could you imagine your child just turning on you like this? Gallon is an avid priest gamer. Gallon made a mistake here as well. Poking the Defender of Argus on the Divine Shield first. And then Urexar and push for damage. I don't think it matters, but you know, Gallon's I, I saw him shake his head afterwards, like, what am I doing? And it's just like, again, another testament of how bad the matchup is in this situation. You know, this is like the ultimate example of a counter cue, I think, is, is this style of matchup. It's one of the reasons that cloning gallery priests, I think, came into prominence, is because there was so much death rattle hunter. Fino, free to take his time here, even on the spellstone. One spell upgrades him, why not? I definitely like the Priest, how it came in to be. Uh, priest was kind of lacking in the meta for a little bit. There was the Control Priest variant, but that wasn't exactly the best, especially with Druid running rampant on ladder right now. You can't really beat Druid with that deck. Whereas this one, you can most certainly beat Druid. You just go Zaire's cloning gallery and you kill him from 40, 50 life. Whereas, you know, the other Priest doesn't necessarily have that same kind of game plan. Army of the Dead, not a bad pickup. It's not bad, but uh, uh, neither are two psychic screams, and neither are four giant. Min oh, not giant minions! Ah, that is one of the risks you play with this deck. Sometimes you get very mediocre, but just having a Lyra on board sometimes is good enough. Lyra carries games, admirable. Yeah, so does Deathstalker Rexar at times too, though. Fair enough. You know, the, now that we've seen a poor resurrection from Fino. You know, suddenly we've breached into winnable territory for Gallon. I mean, both spellstones were natural. None of them were from Shadow Visions, so he's not going to be able to fetch another one. Will have both Resurrects, though. Does still have both Eternal Servitudes. Pretty sure he took Owl on the first one. I think he did. I think you just take health efficiency. You also have to consider what else is going to be played that turn mana-wise. Looks like he wanted to get the egg down, so I want to make sure he was as mana efficient as possible. <laughs> no one's better than one Lyra. A Lyra and a Radiant Lyra Elementals? And a half. <laughs> Lyra and a half. Yep. I like it. It's, it's pretty much down. that one. Whenever you have time to play Malagos, you know you're in a good spot. You know, that, that's like a situation that I'm curious if, if we're going to see once uh, the hero cards eventually end up rotating out. Are we going to see stuff like Ysera you like, mean the, actually the, be back in the metagame? I mean the OG 412, Ysera. It's like, I guess they're both it's just OGs. big value stuff going to be good again? I don't really know. Now while Katharina's on watch. I, I just really don't know how Gallant is going to get two back into this one. He's just, he's getting beat up so, bo oh, okay. okay. Well, so I do know how Gallant can get back into this one. Unfortunately, there are no spells that deal damage, but taking the 412, that's the thing, is taking the 412 from Fino's pool. It was in his hand. It's not in the, the, res, the death rattle situation right now. Or I'm sorry, the, the death pool. And also, it's a 412. And Priest notoriously, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you've been told this before, Admirable, but Priest notoriously has a hard time dealing with dragons. Give me a plot twist, and I don't like it. I was ready to check my bingo card. <laughs> my caster bingo. Mentions four attack minion versus priest. Yeah. Right, there we go. I got it. Oh, good job. It's a divine shield poisonous 
play dead bloat bat. That's a good bloat bat. That's a bingo. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> that, that was, it just had like a random bug fly by my head. I was ready to karate chop it. I didn't know what it was. I was freaking out. It almost looked like that blow bat. <laughs> Dino is technically running out of gas, though. That's the Lyra thing. Lyra needs to do a lot of work. Yeah, that, I mean, Fino is very running out of gas. You know, w once you get past the cloning gallery and then, you know, the first spell stone, it was quite bad, I would say. Fino looked at his uh, engine in his car, and he saw it hovering towards the E, and he was like, ah, it's fine, I can make it home. But he forgot to remember that he was like, he lives in Europe. And then, and then his exit was home. closed. And he went, oh, <laughs> oh no. no. Oh, no. That's the worst. <laughs> of course, his phone didn't tell him yeah. that the exit was closed. And, and unfortunately, he stalled out on Gallon's uh, crazy animal farm here. <laughs> that does not sound like a place I want to be well, admirable. This is not a place I want to be in the matchup right now. Gallon, I think, is starting to, to pull ahead. Gallon's Animal Farm. <laughs> when Catherine is not him. the play, that's when you know you're starting to lose as the opposite side. It's not as simple as Katharina. They have options. He's going to play Katharina, but the point is Gallon was thinking about not. The blow bat. <laughs> that stops the spell stone. Yes, it does. I think that's the first time I've seen Katharina pull something that wasn't in the standard deck list. I didn't even know Katharina could do it. This game is getting crazy. It's not like that crazy explosive point yet. It, right now, it's just like. Very fringe scenario. Yeah, I that don't really know what's come up. You probably have not been in this situation before. Third psychic scream for Fino. He's gonna play Army of the Dead now. Redraws the Katharina. I think it's gonna pull the blow back again. Look, I, I don't it, even know if there's another beast in the deck. Here's a, here's what I'm looking at. You just you just Katharina, and you saw the third psychic scream, and now Gallon goes. Well, why would I, Katharina, now? The, the, all the Psychic Screams are now officially gone. He's free to play Army of the Dead at that point. That was why he did not Army of the Dead previously. He was thinking about... He wanted to bait out the last, that psychic, last scream. psychic Scream. Fino loads up another fairly weak Spellstone, albeit this one is much better than the previous. I think Death and Decay has to be played this turn. Can Shadow Word Death, the 5 5 effort comes out, does find Shadow Vision. Ooh. Things could get pretty wacky here. So Mino now. He needs to go quick, though, if he wants to play multiple spells this turn. Yeah, budget Shadowy Brand to win in hand. Another Spell Stone. That's important. Another, Another death, death and, and decay. decay. The craziest part about Death and Decay is you can play it with the Prophet Velen. My control tech. Takes oh. the Lich King! And that is one of the biggest silly axes I've ever seen. Fino's having a bad set right now. Hang in there, Fino! Good job! <laughs> How on I'm earth? right there with you, Admirable. How on earth is Fino going to win from this spot? By pure determination. And a lot of Lyra spells. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Oh, of Lyra spells. boy. Oh. I didn't think it could get any worse. He's going to need quite a bit of time to get out of this one. So, Lich King. Uh, it's not dying on Gallon's side without a little help from Vino this turn. And that is a lot of mana to spend to have to do it. Now, the benefit of that is you pretty much want to spend the mana. I think if you're Fino here, you may have to just... Yeah, it's your whole turn. This is absurd. You cannot just let this live. This board pressure is terrifying. Yeah, you kind of have to play the Zilliax now. Save. I would save the coin for... 
The Lyra. The Mind Blast found, so he's getting somewhere. I mean, got a game plan in mind. Bell and Mind Blast, coin Mind Blast. That's 20. That'd be one damage off lethal if there was no taunt in the way or anything like that. But honestly, it's not even that bad to put Gallon down to one health because of Shadow Form. Can just transform and finish it off. Oh, that's a good point. And Gallon, it'd be, it would force Gallon to build a Lifesteal Beast this turn. But I think Gallon might feel like he's comfortable. That he doesn't necessarily need to build a Lifesteal Beast this quick. That he could go with other plays. I would I would venture to say that Gallon is feeling in comfortable territory still, uh, but but very mindful of you know additional shadow visions. Very mindful of the fact that there are natural mind blasts in the deck. Very mindful that Velen was not in the, in the pool either for uh, for minions in the death pool. So you know there's still a lot of stuff that's happening here. Gallon just going to play his big thing, and that threatens. Further territory as well is for Velen in the side. pool? I thought it came off the cloning gallery earlier. What's the one in hand from? Naturally drawn from the deck. Ah, it might be in the pool. I think it is in the pool from earlier, because I believe it was uh, killed off with the Deathstalker Rexar. Ah, so I quick. think I th you could be right. Hmm. That's the weirdest part about this deck. I forget about that. Yeah. You forget that if the cloning gallery was played very early on, <sighs> mostly everything's in the pool. It's such a hard deck. My head hurts. Kind of in a good way. Just so much going on. You know, I, I sat with Rage over BlizzCon, we, you know, a couple days before we were just kind of playing some decks and learning stuff. And he got into so many weird situations with this deck where he'd be playing for fatigue all of a sudden, he'd be playing for values. Like, it, at a certain point, I, I was watching him play a Cloning Gallery Priest versus Togwaggle matchup where the opposing Togwaggle had gotten burned, and it, it genuinely just looked like two arena decks going at it. <laughs> Going to fit in the Mind Blast. I'm not sure how many cards are left in the deck at this point, but I think the reason Fino did that is because if he ever draws that second Mind Blast, he instantly has that 20 burst damage that he would need. That's a good point. So, so Fino, the, the, the Mind Blast here, he sets up a perfect draw. Exactly. Ah. Or if he were to find um, Death, Death Coil. Coil off of this Lich King, ah. that would also set it up. Fino, Fino knows Very what's up. Intelligent. A lot of times I watch Fino play, and it feels like the way that he's setting up a game is to avoid giant weird pitfalls of just dying. But when I... When I watch him play, sometimes I also feel like he's trying to set up those pitfalls for his opponent. He's just kind yes. of biding his time until one of those big situations comes up. It's very interesting to watch because I look back to game number one, where he had won with the Death Rattle Hunter versus Odd Paladin, and that's like almost the exact same thing he set up, was a giant pitfall for Gallant. He played the Spider Bomb early on, he was able to cube it, and then ran into the play dead Zilli, I'm sorry, the play dead uh, Shaw turn. Looks like Gallant's not even falling for this pitfall. He built Plated Beetle Boar, and I wouldn't be surprised if he runs it into this Lich King to get that three extra armor so he doesn't die to that scenario. He knows that Fino has a coin in hand from Gilded Gargoyle. And you can imagine if a Mind Blast was just played there, that it would mean Fino was setting up something. Yeah, I'm gonna take this time to protect the King Crush that with Anti-Magic is... Shell. That's a massive King Crush. This game is not close to over just yet. We're getting there, though. It's getting down to the wire. Uh-oh. Zilliax, does that help him in any way? Well, I was looking at, is there anything with Malagos that, that does anything crazy here? Malagos can answer the, oh, no, you can't because it can't be targeted. I was going to say Malagos could answer it with the shadow form, but it has anti-magic shell can on it. Can it answer it with the spirit lash? Well, you would have to go Malago Spirit Lash, one Shadow off, Form, yeah. and then Hero Power it, which would be exact damage. The issue is you can't Hero Power it. Upgraded Spellstone. Reap. Oh, my. That is a massive board. Callan just used Hunter's Mark. He still has the Bloat Bat in the deck. <gasps> If he hits this blow bat. Ah! That was an insane spot from Gallon. Oh my gosh! And Vito! Look at his face! 
This game's insane! That's not supposed to happen! That's not in the deck! But it's in the deck! What is happening? And Fino is back to just being so close to lethal. He still has another Mind Blast in the deck. Can still find that. This Blow Bat is going to cause a lot of trouble. Especially with a 10 for King Grush. Mm. Can't be targeted. I'm trying to think if there's any very sneaky lethal that Fino can try and go for well, here. It, is, it, is it Lyra and hope to find another relevant card? Like, there's a lot of cheap spells that he can play right now. If you go Lyra, Shadow Form, Hero Power Face, you put him to 20. If you find another Holy Smite, I believe... Holy Smites are you four piece with the Valen. You wouldn't have enough mana because you couldn't fit in the Hero Power. He's had enough of this blow pad. That's a lowly rating elemental. There's the other Mind Blast. Four cards left in deck. I wonder what the purpose oh of playing my. that army of the dead was. I don't know. I think I think Fino. What was he trying to hit I don't, there? I don't know. I don't. He was trying to hit something. Well, he's looking at it right now. It could have been Lich King. It could have been Malagos. This could, feels like this feels like a way to blunder because uh, I, I think that the Lyra chain is the last line of potential offense here for Fino. I think so as well. I'm just trying to think of what he was trying to hit from that Army of the Dead. I, I thought it might be Zilliax in order to try and answer the King Crush, but I don't think Zilliax is in the deck. I'm pretty sure that was naturally played. This game is absolutely absurd. Could have been that, just to try and stay alive. There are two of those left in the deck, I believe. Yeah, but you gotta win. Well, if he pulled two. Yeah, but you gotta win. Well, Lyra can't win anymore. That. Lyra is going to determine that. No, Vino's dead. What can he get? What could he get? Well, we're gonna find out. That's not it. It's the first time I've ever seen this happen. Crazy game. Bloat bats galore. That bloat bat <laughs> single handedly took on three spell stones. Give that man a medal. <laughs> Give that pad a medal. Wow. That that is that is a nutso game. That's the that's the kind of pan out that Gallon can find himself winning in. It's when cloning gallery doesn't kill you instantly, and then your opponent's first spellstone is not an overwhelming amount of presence. Now, Gallon still needed to find Blowbat. He was very patient with the play deads in that matchup. Didn't want to do anything crazy or greedy with him. Found the bloat bat and knew exactly what to do with him afterwards. He did a lot of favorable outcomes for that to be the case, but... I must wonder, though, if Fino could have done something different that game. I felt like there had to have been something different. I, mean, I don't I think so. Like, I feel like Lyra may have been held on to too long. Like there could have been a potential turn where Lyra was better. I think the turn previous step, you know, to the army. Yeah, it didn't quite get the army of the dead. It's, it's very difficult to make that call, though, because Fino may have felt his only way of winning was getting two Grizzlies and hoping one of them tried to connect face. Yeah, it's, I think it's very, I think it's, you know, reasonable and possible. You know, Lyra is a very long shot once you come to that point, and that's what you're going to go for. Lyra is the Hail Mary. You've got nothing else to turn to. You turn to Lyra. Right now, Fino's in a bad spot having to cue this Malagos Druid up. Yeah, this matchup, um, I have felt... I feel like when I'm playing Druid, I'm always right on the verge of getting there. But you're always like one to two cards yeah. off, like one more turn off. And then suddenly, like a big cute play happens, and I go, ah, well, okay. But I you're always right on the verge. I think one of the most important cards, like, is Twig of the World Tree. 
I know Tori the World Tree obviously is strong in a lot of matchups, but I would almost call it necessary in this matchup because it gives you the excess mana to set up a lethal turn that you may not have necessarily. Yeah, I think it's one of the reasons that we've seen a lot of oozes show up in tournaments and not necessarily on ladder. Um, you know, on ladder, you're playing against different kinds of druids as well. There's also Togwaggle druids, there's some druids out there. In tournaments, a lot of times you expect Malagos druid to be uh, the deck and sprout. It's just a very strong, even across the playing field kind of card. Uh, Ooze shows up in Death Rattle Hunter to you know, try to compound that issue even more. To try to ensure that you get that victory because you're playing against a more predictable style of field. You know, you can't just bring a crazy deck to a tournament because it's not, it's not the same as ladder. You gotta win with some of those decks eventually. And Ooze is just an all-around solid card in a lot of matchups. It's it gives you early contesting against Odd Rogue, against Odd Pout, and answers one of your troublemaker cards in Vine Cleaver. And then, like you said, in Druid, it gets rid of the most problematic card and basically guarantees. Yeah. You Last year standing, you know, you're, you're just going to expect to have to ban different things at times as, yes. as well. And so, but there's a lot of weapon matchups out there. It's just a fine inclusion. The hardest part about this matchup is sometimes you want to use the swipe in order to clean things up. Not saying necessarily in this situation. You could go swipe Hero Power Spellstone. Sometimes you want to use the swipe, but you know you can't. Yeah. It, it's tough because you have to find yourself not falling too far behind, but you have to be conservative at the same time. If you're too liberal with resources, you know, you just, it's not really as much about gassing out as it is the inability to actually, you know, finish the game. The inability to actually win afterwards. Now, Gallon's not going to run out of gas for quite a long time. And, you know, looking at this hand, Gallon's just not going to run out of gas. He's got a high main on six. and have Katharina that he kept in the opening hand. Can't blame him. Katharina is the most important card in this deck. I wonder if Fino plays Lich King. So if he plays Lich King, there's a lot of merit to getting the Spider Bomb down now. But uh, Spider Bomb is one of those tricky cards in this matchup that you want to save it for a turn where you think they may be trying to do a Malagos combo or something like that because if they potentially have to use the swipe, it could clean up the Malagos. Yeah, it's a style of disruption tool. You're trying to throw your opponent off from being able to take a critical turn. I think this here signals that there is a Lich King in the deck and Gallon does not want to have to try and answer that Lich King now. Yeah, Lich King has become a little bit more standard, I'd say, in uh, Malagos Druid. It, there was a time where players were debating, do you include a large option or do you not include one? Uh, and I think it's just kind of come to the point where y you pretty much include one. I think this is a single draw for Fino. He sees Innervate, and that means Innervate Ultimate Infestation, and that means... That's a tough call at this point now, too. Because now I'm looking at this Spider Bomb, and I'm thinking, do I need to Moonfire this? Do I need to Hear Power it as well? Can I afford to use a Swipe? Can I ever justify a Naturalize here? Like, you don't want to lose your 5-5, five five, and I don't think it's worth a Naturalize, in my opinion. I think the Moonfire was fine. You you only really need one Swipe and one Moonfire, because when you Alex Straza them, you put them to 15, and the yeah. Malagos combo will deal that amount of damage. Oh, baby. To me, a pretty good swing turn. That's, a, that's another important uh, vital part of, I think, winning the matchup as well, is Arcane Tyrants. Uh, being able to get Arcane Tyrant into a, a reasonable position and get ahead of the matchup gives you a lot more time, and it can chip away as well. And oftentimes, you can deliver 15 points of damage and not have to play Alex Strauss in this situation. If you get them early, they also don't clog up your hand. You know, look at it like Dream Petal Forest timings. I almost don't mind getting this other... That's a that's a rough call. That's a floop. Because... I don't like flooping. That's a rough call. I, I almost don't mind it. But at the same time, if you just straight up draw Malagos, you can play the Malagos and then go floop, swipe, Moonfire to try and end the game. Yeah, a lot of different, you know, combo variations with that. I think that's the most difficult part about this deck is using that card to its fullest potential. I mean, is a 3-4 right now good? Or rather or rather, not using it to its fullest potential instead. And just saying, you know what, it's another minion I need it on the board yeah, right now. Yeah, saying it's good enough. Yeah, that, that's a tough call to make. And some of the players that, that I think are, are the best at that is like uh, like when I watch Purple practice, and the way that he uses Floop sometimes, I'm like, dude, you are crazy. And then you look seven turns down the road or whatever, and you're like, I don't understand how you got to this point or how you saw that seven turns ago. But being able to aggressively use mechanisms that you don't typically do 
uh, I think is a very important facet for a, a number of the powerful decks in the format right now. There's a lot of different ways to win. Uh, and so, you know, while you do have your blowout draws, you're going to have those pretty much any time you decide to play cards. You have a lot of games where you don't have ideal draws, and that's really what's what's going to separate that difference. When you when you're not in an ideal situation and everything's not lining up perfectly, how do you win anyway? It's also just kind of understanding that you know the card is very flexible, and seeing that you know you could save it to potentially be a Malagos later on, but if you play it just as a three four now, maybe it pushes in more damage than the Malagos that you would have held later on, and. I love those cards in Hearthstone. Another important one to note here, Fino going with Poison Minions in this spot. Uh, heading into a Katharina turn uh, is often a time to make Poisonous Minions because it helps disrupt that pressure that's going to come across the other side of the board. So now, Gallon is faced with the Katharina, and he's looking at two spiders and goes, well, I do want to clear off this Tyrant because it's starting to bash in some damage, but I also need to clear off these spiders so they don't kill all my stuff. The spiders also help get through that Witchwood Grizzly. That is going to be a very problematic card. means that Fino doesn't necessarily have to use the Naturalize just yet. Naturalize is one of those cards you save for a last-ditch effort. You don't want to play that card early. Or King Crush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a last-ditch effort. That's a la so Gallon is going to go with a different plan here. Uh, you know, this is a fairly heavy deviation. I think Twig is too late to make a big difference right now. Play the Ooze as well. Yeah, exactly. I think Twig is too late to make a difference right now, so just starting to apply pressure on I the other side. I see that. But Fino very much took Gallon off of that Katharina turn. That's a good spot from Fino, making sure to get rid of that Katharina turn. I mean, he also knows that card has been in the mulligan since the start. Now, when you take your opponent off a of Katharina turn, though, do you have enough time to start using Twig? He's at a decent life total. I think the rest of Fino's plays look pretty weak right now. And mind you, when the twig gets drawn and there's no more ooze on the other side, if you have time to use twig, that means you can use that floop. This is, this is quite interesting. I'm trying to think of a way that Fino can set up one of these spiders to live, but I'm not quite Oh, this, yeah, it. yeah, no, the spiders are, I think, very dead. At least they did their job. Itsy Bitsy Spider. Went on the Hearthstone board. Not. Down came Katharina. And the spider died. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite uh, child novel. Yeah, I mean, Grizzly's gonna... Grizzly's gonna say, no, no twig, you cannot. Ooh. Oh, the goose. can go Malagoose with the Spellstone. The thing that I'm looking at here is that Gallon has not applied quite enough pressure to take away too much of Fino's time. Fino has saved a lot of tools for counter pressure. And I think he may have time to still be in this one. I see two lines of play here for Fino. He could go for the Malagos this turn and trying to set up something, but he also could just play out Spreading Plague. And if he plays out Spreading Plague, My there's no strong plague. way that Gallon gets through it, typically. And then he could try and set up the Taunt Wall. That way he could play a Malagos and try and get two Malagos on the following turn. All right, call me crazy. I want an Alex face. And then I want to play Malagos, and then I want to floop and try to kill him. I like that too. I'm sold. <laughs> I don't have all the time in the world. I do have a naturalized defend off board position. I get to take him down to 14. Heck, he could win without playing the Goose next turn. He could just win with just damage in hand. He's got four on the Twig from the Hero Power, eight more from the Swipe. That's 12 plus the Moonfire, it's 13. So he's one damage off and just killing him that way. I'm sold, Admirable. Where do I pick it up at? Well, we're gonna pick it up at Gallon trying to figure out how to stay alive in this game afterwards, because that Alex face, you get a very clean idea of where Fino's going now. I like that. Fino recognized that, you know, although he does have time, he doesn't have all the time in the world. He needs to get this going quickly. If you play the, Mal the Malagos first, and then you Alex Straza afterwards, you're like, ah, oh, well, I'll save the Alex Straza and figure out if I, if I can afford to do this. That floop's going to be an Alex Straza instead. Exactly. It takes away that play. So you have to, if you're going to play the Alex Straza. If you're going to go Straza, with this line of play, you have to play the Alex first. Another three-turn setup.
That's what makes this deck one of the best in the game right now. It's just the versatility and the different lines of play you can always take with it. No game feels straightforward. And the games that do feel straightforward, it's because you've got Wild Growth and Nourish. You're just doing what Druid intended. Gallant's managed to isolate the twig, but the life total seems to be the uh, problematic part of this. Juiced Spellstone right now, too. Malagos, Spellstone, swing the weapon face. I like where this is going. I think Fino is trying to figure out if there's any way he dies. Well, Gallon's got 21 represented on board right now with the hero power. So he's still 15 off from that spot. Uh oh. That's not enough. Yeah, I think I think Alan's just done. Even he needed more pressure early on. And he couldn't really get that. Not really much you can do about it. Like you said, just needed that pressure, didn't really find it. Needed a way to, to you know keep health around. Alex Strauss you know, typically does a pretty good job of making that go away. Gallon knows what's happening. As soon as you see that Maligos hit the board, you kind of know it's over. Game five. We got a Mali Druid Mirror coming up, but one of them is not quite like the other. It's like a game of spot the difference. Kind of like a, a both deck list. It's been a grueling battle between these two so far. I mean, my gosh, the, the Priest game versus Hunter lasted forever. That was that was a grueling. It's also been the unfavorables winning matchups. Yes. And the crazy part about this is it could honestly come down to King Mukla giving two bananas to burn a key important <laughs> card. Yes, that's right. You did not hear Dr. Jikaniki wrong. There is a King Mukla in Gallon's Druid deck. He's brought uh, a math, uh, I'm sorry, Oaken Summons package uh, with his Druid deck. It includes 200 Blade Masters and a King Mukla. Just more stuff to do early on. Gallon, Gallon is a is a big fan of just doing stuff. I mean, the minions are honestly going to be very good for Gallon in this matchup. It allows him to push through extra bits of damage Ooh. that initially he wouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, now, but having both injured Blade Masters in the hand, there's no circle of healing. Well, These things are going to be 4-3s. True, but he does now have a coin wild growth into 4-3 into a 4-3. Does Gallon decide to go for I mean, I think you do it. I like it. Well, that's the option. I think you play these in your deck for a reason. Uh-oh. He just knew the sequence? I know it, too. I have to Google that every time. Drum, big lily pad. Shell, big lily pad, small lily pad. You just said it, and I don't remember it. I just watched I really it, and I don't remember it. really hope what I said it. was right, too. <laughs> the Mukla! I can, he I, I can hear them out in the crowd the chanting when the Mukla gets drawn. That is that pushes five damage over and over. And, and over. honestly, this start is pretty bananas. I mean, Fino doesn't have anything that really fends this off right now. <laughs> Starts pretty bananas. Fino. Fino's start is also pretty bananas. Fino has a pretty solid start himself. He could just play out the Malakut's next the turn. <laughs> turn four. Look at Cal's face. He's like, okay. I'm playing fair cards, you're playing unfair cards. <laughs> Sometimes the fair cards win that, though. You know, Vino's kind of gassed out afterwards. He's got two big minions left and a naturalize. Got a twig churning. But Gallon's at, cranking damage, too! Vino's at 15 health already. That... That move... Ah, yeah, he's got he a naturalize. He has to naturalize a three-mana... Mukla. He had to naturalize it, Admiral. You don't want to do that in this matchup. I mean, you know, here's the deal. All things really considered, a lot of times this matchup comes down to a fatigue-style matchup. The resources trade very evenly. 
and the life totals can get quite ridiculous to the point where killing your opponent with a Malagos turn, uh, you know, not really a, a very realistic thing anymore. Hmm. It's actually kind of crazy. Having the Oaken Summons not pull anything is actually going to help Gallon in the long run if it does go to fatigue. Well, that's a very slick yeah, thing. Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. But Gallon's been pushing <laughs> damage. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, you could be... Wow! Th this is a nod for Fino to the idea that you don't always have to, you know, combo your opponent, or that sometimes it's, you know, rather almost impossible to do so as well. Not only that, but uh, if he went for any other line of play, he could have just died. Oh, yeah, he's at 11. <laughs> he's at 11 health. Injured Blademaster and King Mukla have pushed 20 damage easily. Gallon with another choice in front of him now. I mean, he was re he was rearing and ready to go with this Valfurion. Fino was trying to check if anyone wanted to see this game. It's like this crazy stuff going on right now. I think this is the earliest I've ever seen a Malagos get committed in the mirror. I don't think I've seen a Malagos hit the board this early in quite some time. Yeah, again, from my perspective, I don't think it's unusual. It's rare, but it's not unusual. Yes. If, if Is that the right word for it? I get what you're going for. Yeah, it's, it, again, like, it happens, and there are situations where it needs to happen, but it's not something common. You're not happy about it, but you're not unhappy about it. It's not the end of the world. So Gallon here is staring down this 513 Malagos, and when your opponent has a twig on one, you know, you are kind of nervous yourself. Like, your opponent, you know, could potentially have a 20-mana turn with a Malagos in play. <laughs> Gallon is saying, all right, ultimate infestation. Don't be there. One time, dealer. All right, let's go fishing. Plead the, if I remember correctly, if I remember my interactions correctly, Obliterate will deal extra damage. To no, Fino Obliterate well. does not, Obliterate I don't think not. so. I don't think it does. I don't actually know for certain, though. Hmm. I think it does for some reason. I think it doesn't because it's not text damage. Like, Shield Slam, I think, is the one exception to it because the damage is technically X. It's a variable damage on but the Shield Slam. But Obliterate is also variable damage with the health of the minion. Or is it the minion exploding on you and, like, you know, it counts as physical damage instead? I don't actually know. I really don't. Nobody knows. Just gonna crack the twig too. I mean, we'll find out because I'm, I'm imagining that he's going to obliterate this. No. Yep. I wasn't exactly sure. It does discount an Alex Strauss into two mana for next turn though. By the way, Gallant's still staring down a Malagos. Oh, and by the way, Gallant does not have an answer for the Malagos. Yeah. This might be an aggressive Alex Straza too. By the way, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 614 Malagos. <laughs> the bananas are coming back to bite Gallon. <laughs> Malagos has been working out. Yeah, Malagos has been hitting the gym. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, now it's probably a defensive Alex Straza. Because you can hero power, take the damage, and then heal back up to 15. Yeah, it's pretty rare you can just tank 8 when you're at 11, but I'd say this is the situation. And then Gallon might have to obliterate for 14 health next turn just to answer this Malagos. I mean, obviously, he can draw with the Nourish first. And that, that could be something Fino's thinking about, too, though, is, you know, Doom Pact, obliterate. Do you overcommit in this spot? Maybe you do just use the health on a Malagos. Maybe you do just Spellstone and trade in your, your Dream Petal Flores. I mean, Flores has pretty much done its job. It's not significant, I'd say, at this point in the game anymore beyond the fact that it's a 4-4. I mean, I think Fino is so behind right here that this uh, card needs to go above and beyond its Call of Duty. I, I think this 4-4 needs to push in this 12 damage. At least. As scary as that is. I don't believe you. You don't believe me? No. I would make it push four damage. 
I don't think it's going to get 12. Oh, he's going aggressive. Wow. I actually it, does love that push 12? This. That pushes 13. That's, that's you know, Dream Pedal Force pretty much did its job at that point then. Like I said, Dream Pedal Force need to push All right. at least 12 damage. And that it did. Not the conventional way. <laughs> and because of this, Gallon can't actually safely obliterate. But he can. Swipe. He's going to leave it up for one more turn. Gain some armor and kill this Alex Straza. He technically can kill everything. He might have to. If you kill everything, you're still dead to swipe. You can moonfire the Malikos to take one less extra damage. I, I'm not killing the goose. I'm not doing it. I refuse. I'm going to take six more damage. And I'm going to launch Ultimate Infestation and hope that I can find a victory here. I'm going to hope that Fino doesn't draw the right card. But see, That's I might obliterate it because I know I'm casting Ultimate Infestation next turn. Death is eternal. He's oh! not. Shut up! I love what this is from that? Gallen. This is a crazy I set. love this. Anything he Mount would Burian. die to, he would die to anyway. Swipe. Ultimate Infestation. Moonfire oh, does it, though! He's rounded. Moonfire on the Malagos to save one extra health! Ultimate Infestation's gonna put him out of range! This is insane! No way! Gallon, you are a madman, but I love it! Gallon is gonna win the game off the back of that play! Oh, wait a minute! What is there's, happening? There's not a second Moonfire in the deck. My heart can't take it! There's not a second Moonfire in the deck. The one was used really early on. Hmm. I think Fino runs an Innervate, but I don't think that changes anything. You hit the 5-5! Five five. You're at 7! Gallon just drew 5 cards! You can't just... You, you gotta survive! <laughs> Branching pass. Oh my gosh. Take up. Is that All just right. lethal though? Wait, he's just lethal. Oh my gosh. It's just damage. Not ta reverse tank up. <laughs> Take it all back. Headset comes off. Gallon 3 2. Holy smokes. You just don't get much better top-notch play than what we've seen in this set. I'm speechless. What the hell was that? Uh, what is going? That's what I'm saying. I didn't, what I, the hell? I,